What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a very early look at an upcoming mini PC, and there is something very special about this PC, we'll be seeing a lot of these in the future, and that's because these little mini PCs are going to be powered by the new AMD Ryzen 6000 series, from the 6800U up to the 6900HS, and right here we have a 6900HS in this unit with LPDDR5 RAM. And what makes these new APUs so special is they've done away with the Vega integrated graphics and they've swapped over to RDNA 2. So these upcoming mini PCs are going to be a very viable source for 1080p gaming and we're going to take a look at that in the video. But I can tell you right now that when you compare this to the 5000 series with the Vega APUs, this thing is miles ahead of it. When it comes to the 3000 series, 4000 and 5000 series Ryzen powered mini PCs, they usually come with around a 65 watt power supply, but these are going to be shipping with a 90 to a 120 watt power supply because uh, we can actually take the TDP up on this up to 75 watts. And when it comes to the specs, we've got that Ryzen 9 6900 HS up to 75 watts, 8 cores, 16 threads, base clock of 3.3 gigahertz with a boost up to 4.9. This one here is using LPDDR5 RAM running at 4800 megahertz, so it's non-user replaceable. But by the time these mini PCs release, there's a chance that it could use SODIMM RAM and you can go up to 5500 megahertz. But it is a bit expensive right now and even LPDDR5 is really hard to get your hands on. And finally, the best thing that these little mini PCs are going to have going for it, at least in my opinion, are the new RDNA 2 graphics. This is an iGPU built-in, and AMD is calling it the 680M. We've got 12 CUs, and it runs up to 2400 MHz. Right now, this is the cooler being used on that mobile APU. It does a pretty decent job, but uh, at 75 watts, this does get quite loud. And when running this at 75 watts, I was able to hit thermal throttle while running Cinebench. It gets a bit high while gaming, but I never hit thermal throttle while I was playing games at 1080p. So this was set at 35 watts right out of the box, and we can go up to 54 in the BIOS like most of these little mini PCs, but I definitely wanted to get a little more out of it. I really wanted to max this out. So I installed AMD APU Tuning Utility, and I've taken it up to 75 watts. And yes, it will run at 75 watts. Like I mentioned, the cooler it's using right now does get a bit warm, but uh, while gaming, I think we'll be good to go. We're not going to hit thermal throttle, but trying to run Cinebench like this, it will throttle on us. Give you a look here and show you that we are running at 75 watts. And I'm not sure how well you can hear it, but that little fan is definitely spinning up right now. And with core temp at least, our CPU clock speeds are all messed up with this APU. I haven't been able to do anything about it. But with the latest updates to hardware info, we can display those clocks correctly while we're gaming. And that's exactly what I want to do. Here we have Cyberpunk 2077. Got all of the updates installed. I think they've done a really good job with these updates. I do have Fidelity FX set to performance here, but we're at 1080p, low settings, and crowd density is set to medium. But if you take a look at Afterburner up in the top left hand corner, we're getting over 60 FPS with this game. I completely understand that we're at low, but then you got to remember that this is an iGPU, it's an integrated GPU. This is definitely some of the best performance that I've ever seen out of any iGPU, be it Intel or AMD. Next up, we've got Forza Horizon 5, and if I head into the settings here, you can see that we're at 1080p, resolution scaling is set to balanced, and we're at medium settings. So this is the preset of medium here. And this game runs absolutely amazing on this little setup. And if you take a look at Afterburner, we're pulling around 75 watts. That's what I have it set at with AMD APU tuning utility, and uh, it's kind of holding steady. But our temps are getting a bit high. We're at around 80. But to tell you the truth, with this little cooler at 75 watts, I figured it'd be a bit higher. But that fan is definitely pumping out. It's pretty loud the way it is right now. Here we have Halo Infinite. We're at low settings, 1080p. And, you know, I was really hoping we could get a bit more out of this. If we drop it down to 720, there's a chance we could run this at 60. But it's not that bad like it sits. And especially if you had a FreeSync monitor set up with something like this you wouldn't see any of that frame tearing. Always like to test Project Cars 2 on these APUs. It's something I've been doing since the second generation, so I figured we'd test it here. 1080p, medium settings, and we're getting an average of 72 FPS. 
And just keep in mind, turning V-Sync on with these APUs definitely lowers the power draw. I mean, we're trying to get as much as we can out of this for this video, just to see what it can go up to. But turning V-Sync on with a game that, you know, goes over 60 will definitely help out with that power draw and heat from that APU. Next on the list, we have Doom Eternal 1080p medium settings with no resolution scale. I was really hoping that we could do 60 on this at medium settings, but your best bet would be dropping this down below. Unfortunately, even with this new RDNA 2 GPU, some of these AAA games will have to be dropped down below or even just lower the resolution. Turning this down to 900p would definitely help out, and there's a good chance we could run it at a constant 60 like that, medium settings. And the final game I wanted to test, at least for this video, was Elden Ring. We're at 1080p, low settings, and you'll see it drop into the mid and low 30s. So 1080p is kind of out of the question with this one, if you want to run it at 60. So I did a little more testing with different resolutions, and I came up with 720p low. So it's really, really close to running this at 60fps but uh, that GPU just isn't putting out enough performance for this game, at least the way it is right now. Drivers will be updated for these RDNA 2 graphics down the road. That'll gain us a little more FPS in some of these games that we tested. But in my opinion, the way it's running right now isn't bad at all for integrated graphics. So these 6000 series mini PCs are still a few months off, and by then we should see a little better performance due to driver optimizations and things like that, but I'm a huge fan of this new RDNA 2 iGPU that AMD is using in these 6000 series mobile chips. But I figured I'd go ahead and make a quick video just to show you what kind of performance we can expect out of these 6000 series mini PCs once they're released. And right now, even with these early drivers, 1080p gaming is looking very possible on the new RDNA 2 iGPUs. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in checking out more mini PC videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on so you know when I post my next video. And like always, thanks for watching.